Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Music Theory Tuition series where I work with you step by step through the ABRSM Discovering Music Theory grades. I'll work through every single exercise and explain everything you need to know. You can access information about the books I have available to help you on my website. Go to SharonBill.com. For advert free and longer lessons, you can become a patron at patreon.com forward slash Sharon Bill. If you can give me a like, that would be super. And please do subscribe to my channel to stay updated. You can support this channel by buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com forward slash Sharon Bill. Let's continue with the topic of intervals, looking at page 39 of the Grade 5 Discovering Music Theory workbook. So we get some more opportunity to practice looking at naming these intervals. So I'll work through some with you, then as soon as you feel you can, do press pause, try them on your own, and then come back into the video and we'll check them through together. Let's crack on and check through these answers then. So we're asked to write the name of these intervals. The interval number is given in the first few, but then it's up to us to do so. And I do suggest that you write the interval number first, and then we can adjust whether it's perfect, augmented, diminished, and so on. So here we have a third, one, two, three, going from G to B double flat. So let's think about this. G is our tonic. We always count the lower note as the tonic. G to B would be a major third because G major has F sharps in it. G minor has B flats. And also do remember, because I do realise that major scales... Uh, so the minor scales do have major intervals, so like G minor still has G to A. And so to help us think about which part of that scale it is, whether it's major or minor, do remember that we have the full step is the major. Major means great and minor means diminished. However, we know that G minor has B flats, so G to B is major, G to B flat is minor, However, here we have a double flat, so even smaller than minor, we've made it smaller again. It's a diminished third. That is not the same as G to A, which is a second. This is a third, which has been diminished. So that's a diminished third. Remember, major means greater, minor means smaller. And then we have diminished, we've made it smaller again, we've diminished the interval further. So we know that intervals of an octave are perfect, so G to G would be perfect. And then we've made that interval smaller, G to G is perfect, we've made the interval smaller by bringing the top note down a semitone with the flat. And so G to G flat, we go straight from perfect to diminished. Remember fourths, fifths and octaves are perfect. There's no major or minor. So here we have a D and then we've got an interval of a third. So let's look at D. So D to F. Now we know that D major has F sharps and C sharps. So D to F is minor. F sharp is major. However here we have a double sharp, so we've made it bigger again. So we've gone from major, which is F sharp, and then the double sharp takes us up a semitone. We've augmented it, we've made it greater still. That's an augmented third. So hopefully you're starting to get the hang of this and you do get a feel for how it's going to work out. So perhaps now you feel you can just press pause and have a go on your own. So let's look at these now in the hope that you've perhaps tried some on your own. If not quite yet, then definitely by the next half, just go for it. It doesn't matter if it's wrong. Always work in pencil. You can always erase it if it doesn't work out. Remember, we have the lowest interval. We count up regardless of which way the interval goes. So here we've got a D natural to a D sharp. So we're going from D to D and we can see that's an octave. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Octaves are perfect. So we have D to D, that's a perfect octave, but the 
upper D sharp has been upper D has been raised by a sharp, saying that all at once there. And so we've made the interval bigger, we've augmented it from a perfect to an augmented octave. So that's an augmented octave. Let's look at this next one. So here we have a C, B, A, G. If you're not familiar with the clef, just sketch down the letter names, regardless of which clef it is. If you're not comfortable, just let's work out what we're writing. And then here we have a C, D, E, F, double sharp. So we have a one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh. We have a seventh. And of course we can confirm that because we know G to G is an octave and so one less is a seventh. Now if we treat our lowest note as the tonic, so G is the tonic, we know that G major has F sharps, that would be a major seventh, but we've extended it further, we've augmented it by a semitone to a double sharp. That is not the same as G to G, that would be an octave. And here we have the interval of a seventh. We've counted seven steps. We're replacing the F step and allocation on the stave. And we've gone from major double sharp to augmented. So that's an augmented seventh. which is not the same as a perfect octave, although it sounds to a G, it's to do with which context in the scale or the key and also how we've counted up the steps and this is to do with note F, a seventh away, the way that it's allocated on the stave. Let's continue. So we have a C, B, A, G. And then this is C, D, E, double flat. We have a key signature of B flats and E flats, but that's been replaced by this double flat sign. So we have a one, two, three, four, five, a sixth. So let's see what sort of sixth we've got. So we know that if our lowest note is G, G to E is a major interval, whereas the minor scale has B flats and E flats, and we've made it smaller by going that semitone smaller, so E flat would be a minor sixth. However, we've gone smaller still by bringing it down another semitone to E double flat, and so we've gone from minor to diminished. This is a diminished sixth. Let's continue. Remember, always counting from the lowest note, whichever order it comes in, it doesn't matter, we always count upwards. So here we have an E, and here we have a C double sharp. The lowest note is E, we think in the key of E major, which actually this key signature does confirm, it doesn't necessarily always. We know that E major has F, C, G, D sharps. This is a one, two, three, four, five, six. Remember, always count the lowest note as one. That's the first step, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. So we know that it's the interval of a sixth of some sort. Now in E major, C sharp would be part of that major scale. That's a major sixth. However, it's a double sharp, so we've made it a semitone greater. So we've augmented that major interval and made it a semitone higher, and we go from major to augmented. That's an augmented sixth. Let's press on to this one. So well, let's see what notes we've got going on here. So this is C. B, A, G, that's not the full story yet, but that'll do for now. And then this is a C, this is a B. We have a key signature of B flats, E flats, A flats, D flats, G flats, and C flats. So this is a G flat. This would be a B flat, but it's been raised by a natural sign. So we have G flat to B. Now let's just think about this. It's quite hard thinking in the key of G flat major, perhaps. So we know that G to B... is major. However, we have G 
flat. So because that lower note is a G flat, that's made the interval even bigger. And so actually we've augmented it. So that's an augmented third. It's just easier starting from G instead of G flat. So here we have a B double flat and a C, B, A, G. So that's an interval of a one, two, three, a third. And you can see one, two, three there. Now again, let's just, we've got the same scenario going on here. G to B is major, but this time it's the upper note that's lowered. And we've gone to B flat, which would be minor. And then we've actually gone to a double flat. We can see we've got a double flat. So we've gone from major to minor. G minor has B flat to double flat. And we've gone smaller again. We've diminished the interval even further. And that's a B double flat. So that's a diminished. So this is a diminished. Because we know that minor made smaller is diminished. Just referring back to what you covered in grade four, and you can refer to this on the PDF from my website, or you can refer back to the little tips given in this booklet as well. So let's look at this final row. And if you haven't done so already, I really do recommend that you just try these last few on your own. It doesn't matter if it goes wrong, you will learn better by your mistakes. Always work in pencil, and then you can easily just rectify it and try again. So here we have the interval of a one, two, a second. We have an A here, always count from the lowest note. And then we have a B sharp. Now let's think about this in A major. A full step, A to B is a full tone that would be our major second. But then we've made it greater by the B sharp, so the major interval is made bigger. We've augmented it by a semitone, and so that's an augmented second. It's still a second, even though it looks like you're referring to key C here. It's B sharp because it's written here. It has to be a second because it's re relating to the note B that we've gone to here. So that's an augmented second. And here, if we're not comfortable with the clef, we can just write the letter names C, B, A. That's not quite the full story, but that will do for now. And then C, D, E, F, G. Now we have a key signature of B flats, E flats, A flats, D flats. So that's an A flat. That's an A flat to G sharp. So let's think about this. Now A to G sharp, we know that A major has G sharps, that would be major. And then because it's A flat, it's actually a semitone lower. And so we've gone to augmented there. Also, we could look at it thinking, well, we know that A flat major has B flats, E flats, A flats, and D flats. So A flat to G is a major, that's part of your key signature, G naturals are within your major key signature and then the fact that we've raised it to a G sharp shows that we've gone augmented so you could go at it both ways really it brings the same result it just whichever you find easier and so that's an augmented seventh and then here so we have a Let's just count the spaces and things first. We'll worry about what notes they are. We've got the interval of a one, two, three, fourth. So that's that dealt with straight away. Here we have a C, D, E, F, G, A, B flat. And if that's B, C, D, E, double flat. So we have a one, two, three, fourth. Now B flat to E flat, the key of B flat major 
and also in B flat minor. B flat to E flat is a perfect fourth. Remember, in fourth, fifth, and octave, we have just perfect, no major or minor. However, because it's gone from E flat to E double flat, we've made it smaller, we've diminished the interval by a semitone, and it goes straight from diminished, it's perfect, to diminished, doesn't it? So that's a diminished fourth. And intrinsically, that's everything that there is to learn about intervals. The only thing that we can do now is extend the interval by an octave by dropping the lower note an octave. So here, instead of having G to be a third, we've got a third plus an octave here. And so we just call it a compound third. So here we have a compound major third. Now you could decide to call that a tenth because one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's a major tenth, it means exactly the same thing. However, I find it easier to just add the word compound because we know that fourths, fifths and octaves are perfect intervals, whereas if you translate to the continuing sort of ninth, tenths and so on, you then have to also now remember that elevenths, twelfths and fifteenths are perfect as well because a compound perfect fourth is an eleventh, a compound perfect fifth is the twelfth, and a compound perfect octave is the fifteenth. And I just find it's a little bit too much to remember all those new numbers again, and I've got so used to seeing those intervals sort of like in thirds, that I don't want to now see them again, and it doesn't change the interval at all. For example, if you play some of these intervals, if you play a second or a seventh, so if you play, for example, C to D or C to B, they make a, a discordant sound. And even if you extend it by an octave, so C to this D or even C to this B, it doesn't change the fact, it doesn't dilute the sound of the interval at all, it's still discord. And so it's the same interval, just extended by octaves. The principle is exactly the same. And so I prefer to just stick to thirds, fourths, fifths and just add compound into the mix just to explain the distance of the extra octave. However, either is fine, whichever works best for you. I hope this is helpful to your studies. Please do like and subscribe to stay updated. If you'd like to support this channel, you can buy me a coffee. And for advert-free lessons, you can become a patron. Do visit my website where you'll find many resources available to help you. Visit SharonBill.com. Thanks for watching. Bye.